up everyone welcome back to the channel doing another ride and review a little bit different today I'm actually on my way to work so it's the morning rush hour commute right now and since I gotta go by there anyway <clears throat> the restaurant on my way to work I figured I might as well do the ride and review now because what I'm gonna do is go to the restaurant straight from work leave the bike parked in the work garage and then I'll ride home from work that way I don't have to lock the bike up near the restaurant anyway point is I will not be locking the bike up as per my usual ride and review methodology I'm just gonna roll up to the place show you the front and then with the magic of video ending just cut and that'll be that but then the ride home will be you know regular I'll be talking about it on the way home so not too much traffic on the road right now, but I assume once we get towards Midtown, it's going to be a little crazy. All right, so where am I going? I am going to a brand new place. Literally just opened this week. It's called Misha, and the whole reason why I want to go to this place is because I saw a friend of mine was at the friends and family like preview dinner, opening dinner, and everything there looked really good, particularly they have a dry aged prime rib and it looks like they give a nice generous thick cut of it hopefully that wasn't only for the friends and family hopefully that's the regular size and also uh, they have a mortadella and foie gras terrine uh, I love mortadella it's my favorite of the cured meats the deli meats italian meats whatever you want to call them charcuterie if you want to use the french word um and i do love foie gras so the two of them together in a terrine sounds delightful and going with the cake dealer of course and another couple one of whom you've seen before in my other ride and reviews, NYC Food FOMO. He's pretty psyched about this place too. So hopefully it's good. Taking a little bit of a different route to work today. I don't know how crazy it's gonna be, but I am going on the FDR service road and the plan is let's see if i can make it through this without it getting crazy yeah i'm good the plan is to cut take this up to 23rd then cut across to third avenue and then take third avenue all the way up to 53rd because the restaurant is on 53rd between like third and Lex so it should be right there once I make the left onto 53rd should be right there like on the right hand side of the street I think I don't know I checked the map before so we'll see this looks like a little bit of traffic coming up to 23rd Street let's see what do we got Got 
riding with the cars. 23rd Street is a quicker ride, whether I take it to or from. I might start doing this more often, especially on days when I know there's gonna be light traffic, like Mondays and Fridays are still generally light traffic in the city. I guess people who actually come into the office are doing so in the middle of the week. Let's see, what's his first avenue? Yeah. So this restaurant is operated by a chef, Chef Stupak, and I think he's famous for some other places like Epeyon, Empeyon. I've actually never been to that spot uh, or any of his other spots that, I, that I'm aware of. So this will be my first foray into his cooking psyched for it. Again, psyched for that prime rib. Here's my turn. Get around this Verizon. Wow, open road ahead. I like 3rd Avenue. Never take this. Easy cruising right now. Kind of got the lights timed all wrong, but we'll get that green wave soon enough. how many ride and reviews I've done so far. I was thinking about, you know, the way I've been naming the, the videos lately, it's just ride and review and then the name of the restaurant. But I've been thinking of doing episode number, you know, like ride and review 10, ride and review 48. Kind of like the way people do podcasts. Just the can pick a lane. Um, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I would have to go back and rename all the videos on YouTube, which would be a pain, but we'll see. This is a nice ride. I'm a little bit ahead of the main thrust of morning rush hour traffic, but this is an enjoyable ride so far. Sixth Avenue gets a little crazy because of, um, you know, a little spillover from tunnel traffic downtown. I mean, this side of town, you get the other tunnel, you get the Midtown Tunnel, so, you know, that's right about here now. So it wasn't so bad just now. You know, I guess most of the traffic on this side is coming in. Again, a lot of people may be working from home, so not so bad. But I like this Third Avenue. It's like the unknown, the unknown avenue. Nobody knows about it. I'm the first on it. <laughs> We're well, already at 43rd Street. That's pretty great. Yeah, Midtown now, a little bit of traffic in Midtown. Slow down.
So on my website, I have a little bit of a guide. I guess it's a guide for the city's best prime rib, or my favorite prime rib in the city. And hoping that this is a solid addition to it. Maybe top five, we'll see. The famous Smith & Walensky. Speaking of prime rib, they're known for their prime rib there at Smith & Walensky, but I'm not that big of a fan of it. It's decent. It's never really wowed me. Times I've had it. Sometimes tough, sometimes undercooked, sometimes overcooked. Not a lot of flavor other times, which is strange because it is dry age, but I guess hit and miss, you know? Last time I had it, it was pretty raw. I couldn't eat, and I love a good rare steak, a rare roast, but man, it was not really doable. This is my turn here. Got some traffic. Crosstown's gonna be a little trafficy, but um, this restaurant is gonna be right here on the right, so I'm just gonna pull over and sign off and see you on the inside. There it is. Nisha. Office building. So yeah, like I said, on my way to work today. So this is uh, the tail end of my commute to work. Crossing 53rd Street. Getting around the Midtown traffic, dodging the Midtown pedestrians. Running the Midtown red lights. Eating the Midtown bumps. There we go. part of town I love that about this bike, I can just jump on the curb. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go the wrong way for a street. It's just quicker this way. Instead of going around, down. I don't know if I'll put this in the video, but that was a fun little crosstown ride. Maybe at the end.
dry aged prime rib. Duck and flog raw mortadella. What did we just watch from that one? It was like a Harold and Kumar something or other. Christmas one? Was it the Christmas one? Yeah. Well, we were there. Was that was great. that. Then we all the crackers for the. Oh, nice. Mortadella foie gras. Look at that Mushroom patty melt, huh? Oof. Those are the long tots. Oof. They are like little lots. Uh, it's like. Of course, sorry. Uh, but yeah, my, uh, one of my colleagues was like, yeah, he's talking about how efficient Mexico's been at this tourist game. I, uh, oh, you blew it. You can't take you anywhere. Okay. I wouldn't mind getting one of those. Yeah, it looks pretty. It's nice, right? Kasha Varnish. Well, Kasha Varnishkas? Yeah, there's the Russian way, you know, the... the What's the, in it again? And then... It's bow tie pasta, it's usually <clears throat> with onions, mushrooms, and all kinds of... It's kind of dealer's choice, depending on the grandma or mother looks. They, they look like bow ties. Grandma. Well, that's the edges, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You'd have to, like, get rid of the stuff to... One and done. How'd you do? What you got in What's that lens? This is the old 35 Prime. Look at that. That's gorgeous. In like three years or so? I don't know, but I, I've been insanely busy. Well, no, no, we have. I'm just saying. I was telling Winnie, like, I actually cried at work. Like, I just broke down in tears out of nowhere because I was just so f***ing tired. Man. What's one of my favorite toys? It's still pretty. It's still pretty. That's what I don't understand. Like everyone is having the same problem right now. That you have, yeah. And then one day he just like missed the meeting. Really? Straight up, missed it. Straight up, didn't go. <laughs> You know the premise, right? No. It's basically like the dark underbelly of superheroes. Okay. It's very gory. No, we don't. It's just not open on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> There's a ton of places. Like sneak and see what your photo looks like. You get in there? Well, we like, you know. All right, so Misha, uh, let's see. I, I'll start off with, I guess we'll start off with the cocktails. So that's what we had first. Um, really nice margarita. It was, it's called a horseradish margarita. It had cucumber in it and a smoked salt rim. It was very good. I'm not usually a margarita guy. Like that very much. The um, the old fashioned was too sweet. Oh, uh, skip the old fashioned. Too sweet. They they do like a cherry infusion on the whiskey, and it just makes it way too sweet. Um, starters. We did the mortadella foie gras terrine. Like I said, you know, it was part of the reason why wanted to go there that was good but i think i like them better as two separate items i don't know just i i guess the the um the sum was not more than the parts i guess if that makes sense and um then the bartender actually recommended 
the mushroom patty melt, which was like a burger. Um, that was really good. I did not expect to like that. That was a pleasant surprise. One of the better items of the night. It was on like a, it almost looked like a marble rye bread, like a swirly, it was very pretty. And it came with these uh, long tots that were like a cross between tater tots, uh, knish batter, and almost like fish sticks, which was weird. Very good. Uh, then we had two items from the pasta menu. Uh, we had uh, kasha varnishkis, which is a you know Eastern European dish. It was basically bow tie pasta with uh, couscous. Right, it's a little bit loud. The bow tie pasta with like couscous and caramelized onions and you know herbs. It was good, but I think they were a little heavy on the. Um, caramelized onions and the pasta was a little bit more al dente than I like maybe it's not a traditional pasta maybe it's some other base grain that they make it from I don't know and then the other pasta dish pasta in quotes was the uh, spetzel that was really good that was my favorite item of the night uh, great texture, great flavors, well balanced. There was some cheese in it, some nuts. I really like that. And then uh, for our mains, we ordered the dry aged prime rib. We ordered the braised pork belly. And we had a side of sag spinach, which is uh, Indian style um, spinach wilted spinach stew almost. I guess I, I, I liked it because it was kind of like cream spinach at a steakhouse, but you know, with Indian flavors. And I love sag, it's one of my go-to items when I eat Indian food. So, pork dish was good. The, um, it's kind of like thick cut bacon, but cooked braised. Uh, the lean parts were a little bit dry, but the, the fatty goodness in it, you know, balanced that nicely. So, it, it was actually decent, it was good. I wouldn't say great, but it was good. Let's see, the prime rib was a letdown. I think I was generous in giving it a, a six out of 10 on my rating score. Uh, but there were three problems with it. Uh, one, it was overcooked. You know, the menu says you can't order it anything else other than medium rare. And that's what we would have ordered it anyway. But it came back medium plus bordering on medium well. That's the first item that was wrong with it. The second was, it was dry. It was dry inside, had a weird texture, um, and it was grainy, that's the third. Traffic, always. Yeah, so grainy, like mealy almost. And a lot of times that happens when something's overcooked. For steak, you know, you get that texture, like graininess, but the dryness of it was just like terrible. I mean, not terrible, inedible, but we, you know, we probably could have finished it. We left a big chunk on the, on the plate because it was just like, eh. Um, it comes with boiled potatoes, which is good, but for $120, it's too steep. It's a 20 ounce steak, boneless. Um, it's overpriced. There was good flavor on it from the aging, but not enough to counterbalance the problems with the texture and the, you know, dryness. Just a letdown. What are you doing, man? Um, let's see, all right, so uh, next up we did some dessert. We had, directing us here new pavement so for dessert we did the sticky bun the warm sticky bun and that was 
that was fantastic. It was beautiful. It was flavorful. It was warm. Just the right amount of sweetness that balanced out a little bit with some of that cardamom spice, um, which they use a lot of at this restaurant. There's a lot of Eastern European flavors, Indian flavors, Baltic flavors, Scandinavian. Anyway, jump out to the website, johnnyprimesteaks.com for the full review. I probably wouldn't go back. All right, so listen, my battery died. Um, these GoPro batteries do not last. I said it before, I'll say it again. They gotta do something. They gotta do something with these batteries. They don't last for shit. Um, I get like 30 minutes out of them now. Anyway, I was saying I probably wouldn't go back just because my experience there was mediocre and expensive. So, you know, that's it. That's really it. I had already covered all the food, I think. Um, I said jump out to the website. So all that's left is thanks for watching. Tell your friends, tell your family, like, subscribe, and tell your fucking grandma.